right, we're going to jump down into health. And this screen has seen some significant upgrades and updates uh, from Caterpillar. Caterpillar's done a great job here of pulling together some of the very essentials when you start thinking about equipment management, how do I get all the access to everything that I need for a particular asset to make a better decision. So currently I'm looking at fault codes and you can see down here I've got a running list of fault codes here uh, for different assets and if I keep scrolling down you'll start seeing some of the same assets popping off uh, quite a few of, uh, of uh, fault codes here. Uh, got a description over here and I've got a link. Now I do want to show you uh, how you can look at this a couple of different ways. Me personally, I like to look at this in an asset view. So what I just did there is, is I reorganized the entire view so if this particular articulated truck had multiple codes, and as you can see it does, mind you I'm looking at seven days, um, so in the last seven days here are the codes that popped off on this particular asset. Now I get to break that down. So what I've done here is, is it's rolled up all of the active codes that occurred for that particular time period. I personally like looking at it that way, so really quickly my eye goes to some specific points, like this one had 15 high severity codes. I probably need to look at that one first. So when I come in here, Again, I got a lot of great information. I got what the code is. I got what the source is. So that's the ECM that actually reported it. Is this an event code? I've got 40 occurrences of this, okay? So if I hover over that, it's telling me I got low after treatment cooling fan speed. Tells me the hour meter reading that it popped off. I got date, I got time, and I got the location. When you start thinking about location, like how important that is, some of the codes that are very specific to the machine's operation, so engine over speeds, torque overheats, uh, D rates, uh, maybe transmission abuse, or even coasting in neutral, those things mean different things depending on what's part of the job you're on. If I see that all over the job, maybe I'm talking to an operator. If I see it on one specific part of the job, Maybe I need to go investigate that part of the job to determine do I have a site issue that I need to deal with, you know, that could be safety related for my employees. Another cool feature here. You'll notice I've got this, uh, I've got this link. So e EID 1190 is the actual code that popped off on this machine. So we've got another application. Uh, you're probably familiar with it, SIS. So you'll notice this thing automatically dropped me into uh, several spots within SIS for this particular serial number that has this code tied to it that I can quickly start troubleshooting. Again, thinking about giving you time back in your day. SIS is an absolute wealth of information, but you really got to know where you're going. What VisionLink just did for me there is I went from one machine to one code to quickly going to, hey, how do I troubleshoot this thing and get going with it? Again, time back in your day. Now, I wanna use this filter up here at the top just to kind of give you guys an idea of how you can really kind of boil this thing down for you. So I'm looking at the last seven days. I'm gonna pull this filter up and I'm gonna scroll down here to the bottom. Now you'll notice I've got severity. So I'm gonna say, hey, I want, I want high and I want medium severity uh, codes. And I want to whittle this down a little further and just look at event codes. So that was three clicks uh, and a filter. And I boiled my entire uh, group of assets down to 117 assets. Again, very powerful when you're trying to just navigate uh, to the very specifics of what you're looking for. Another cool feature here, the Unified Suites application limited you to about 12 months worth of data. You now have access to two years worth of data. Now, you may not want to go back that far. Uh, that's going to be a lot of information depending on how talkative your machines are, but you've got access to it. Again, the power is in the information and where you put it. So I'm jumping right over here to the next selection, fluid analysis, and you'll notice, like I mentioned before, 
starting to look and feel the same. Very similar in how you interact with it. We just changed the data set. So I'm looking at all my oil samples now. So if you oil sample with a cat dealer, you oil sample with us, or even if you oil sample with another cat dealer uh, because you operate in more than one dealer's territory, no problem. They're going to show up right here. So you'll notice that I've got that same roll-up feel. I've got one action required. I've got no monitors, and I've got five that are all good. They're green. So really quickly, I'm going here to this one right here, and you'll notice that the verbiage uh, of the interpretive analysis of that oil sample is showing up right here. Now this may be good enough for you. Maybe you don't need anything else. But if you want the details, you want the numbers, you want the actual data on that oil sample, very similar to what we did with SIS, no problem. This link is going to take you straight to that oil sample report that you're used to getting uh, in the mail. So I'm going to roll down here and I can see here's my current sample. Now if this machine had some more hours on it, I'd probably have some more samples on it. Uh, this one's a fairly recent sample. So again, I need to take action on this one. Remember your filters. So I'm going to go back up here to filters like I uh, used on the fault codes. And I'm going to say, you know what? I just want to see my action required and my monitors. So now two clicks and I just reduced my entire list to 13 machines that I need to look at. Again, giving you time back in your day. How do I go and, and find the things that I know I need to do something with? Jumping over one more click, inspections. So if you're familiar with uh, another application called Cat Inspect, so if we've ever come done a service for you, our technicians will leverage Cat Inspect to uh, go through the entire inspection on your machine. Again, this starts to look uh, exactly like the previous two screens. I've got my roll up here. I got my summary count. I know really quickly, hey, this one's got 19 questions that were indicated at being, as being read. Within CAT Inspect, you got a lot of options. Uh, there are full blown TA inspections that are very involved walk around inspections, um, all the way down to just daily inspections. If you're still doing pre-shift inspections on a piece of paper, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, kind of pitch this real quick. I, I know there's a lot of you out there, but CAT Inspect does a great job of allowing you to see right here real quickly, do I have any issues I need to deal with? Rather than a stack of paper on your desk, what if I could go right here and really quickly see how many reds do I have on my pre-shift inspections that I need to immediately start taking action on? It's right here. So I'm going to break this one down and see what's going on here. So I got a TA inspection, very involved. It actually tells me who inspected it. It tells me when he inspected it. It tells me the hour meter reading uh, and, and all that good stuff. So um, this one here, very similarly, I can click into it and it's going to take me to this actual report. This is nice, again, thinking about what Vision Link has done for me now. I've been able to quickly navigate from a machine to SIS, from a machine to my oil samples, from a machine to now my inspections, and really quickly I'm looking at what's going on with this machine and I've got a trained technician that's telling me what's going on here and I'm scrolling through this, okay? Very powerful, very quick, uh, and I'm doing it from one spot. I'm going to switch back over to fault codes briefly and look at my whole string of fault codes again. And remember what I said in the, in the last view, uh, if I want to schedule a report for all of my fault codes to come out based on the filters that I've already engaged up here, no problem. I can come here and say I want an Excel file uh, with all of my fault codes and I want it to come out monthly, and I want it to show up uh, on the fifth day of the month at 8 a.m. in the morning, and uh, I'm gonna leave that blank because I want this to keep coming to me. And I can start putting in email addresses here. I can even put in email content right here. I can say, you know, this verbiage would show up within the email. So these are urgent fault codes please review. And then I can hit save. I'm not going to do it on this one, but you guys get the idea. 
If I want to download this whole thing again into a spreadsheet, no problem. I can do that right here. And I got different formats that I can mess around with uh, and, and start, uh, start diving into this data in a different way if I so choose. So again, as you can see, uh, very similar navigation, very easy. It's easy to follow. Uh, and if I'm, if I'm an equipment manager, if I'm in charge of a fleet of machines, or if I'm in charge of two machines, really quickly I can see that uh, where, what do I need to look at before I start the next, next task of the day, because uh, I've got 100 things that I'm doing today, and I can come in and say, hey, I need to do one, two, three before, before I do anything else.